To start out our GearMate training, you're going to want to download the gear training folder and unzip it. What you're going to find is you're going to start, you're going to find the gear training start assembly, as well as two gears that are, that are already SolidWorks parts. Go ahead and click on the assembly and click open. What you're going to find is there's just a line here that's been created that's the right length for the gear spacing, or basically from the center of one gear to the center of the other. So what we'll do now is we'll go in and into our assembly tool and we're going to hit insert components. And it should go back to our original one and I'm going to grab the large gear first. As I bring the large gear in, I'm going to put this just off to the side there. Now, a couple of mates I want to apply so that the, my gear is spaced in the right place. The first thing mate I want to apply is actually from the front face of this where the teeth are and the front plane. So by making those coincident, you should be good to go there. Well, that's unexpected as this gear currently has no mates on it whatsoever. Oh, I know what the problem is. First part you bring in is always fixed. So you're going to want to right click on this and float it. Okay. At this point now I can move it around. So, sorry, I skipped one step. So face, mate, drop this down, front plane, moves it back there. Second mate, you may need to view um, axes and temporary axes in order to see an axis, an axis in the middle. So if I click that axis and I click one of the endpoints of the line, preferably the left one, it's going to now put that endpoint of that axis right on that line. And I'm going to make those coincident and that will be just fine. At this point now, the gear should, sorry, I'm going to get out of the mate tool, but the gear should spin, okay, but not be able to move forward, backwards, or left or right. So that's mated perfectly. So the next one we're going to bring in is we're going to hit insert components. We're going to grab our small gear and we're going to do kind of the same thing. The first mate we're going to do. Now you have your choice here. You could either do this face and the front plane, or you could do this face and this face. Either way, that'll line things up perfectly with the coincident mate. The second thing you can do, and you may need to want to move things around, is you want to grab your axis, your center axis, and the endpoint. Also make them coincident. So again, this would spin. If I get out of the mate tool, this would spin. Except it does not want to spin. So we spin here. I'm going to go double check. Coincident, 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 coincident. All right. And I'm going to turn off the axes. There we go. It was something about the way I was grabbing it. So that was my fault. So now we're going to look at this. And the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to look at it from the front. I'm going to go ahead and want to spin these gears so that I can get them so that my tear, my, my tooth spacing looks like this. So I've get the a tooth right about in the middle of a gap. Nothing's overlapping. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one down so that my construction line is right about in the center. And then I'm going to move this one into place so that it's about equal distance. So this has the teeth meshing properly. And again, I'm using that, that, uh, construction line as an approximation to keep my alignment good. Now, now's when we're going to apply our gear mate. Okay. So when we pick mate, we're going to switch to mechanical and we're going to switch to gear and we're going to need to make two selections. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just pick one of the round circles that make up this outside face and about the same plate, about the same surface on the other gear. Now we're going to actually set our own ratio so it doesn't really matter what the, what we chose. Now, as you can see, what it automatically does is it picks the diameter and the diameter and tries to make a ratio out of them. Okay? 
um, I can tell you from counting the teeth, this ratio will not work. All right, the large gear has twice as many teeth. It has 30 teeth. The small gear has 15 teeth. So if we change it so that my ratio on the first one is 30 and my ratio or my number for the second one is 15, now I'm going to have this be correct. Now, you can use the gear mate on gears with actual teeth. And when you do that, the most accurate numbers is your tooth count. Okay. Um, if you're using two round objects that are proportionally round, you can actually just use the outside diameters. Um, these do have a slight arc, and we could have chosen this outside diameter as well. Um, but again, with actual gears, the teeth count is the most accurate way to do it. Um, you can use the gear mate with things that aren't actually gears when you want one to rotate and the other will rotate um, as long as you can figure out what that ratio needs to be. And again, you could use their diameters for that, but you'll notice we didn't pick the round parts where they're actually meeting. We just picked a round surface. So as I do that, I'm going to accept it and I'm going to accept it again. And I should be able to grab this and rotate the gear. As long as you can grab that and rotate the gear, you have a correctly applied gear mate. Now, the one thing you may run into, especially with round objects that don't have teeth, is you may need to use the reverse checkbox. If you do the reverse checkbox, you can see they rotate through each other. That's not what I wanted. So if you accidentally do have it running the wrong way, um, you can use that reverse uh, checkbox to to fix it. Uh, that's really all there is about to know about gear mates. Um, and now, um, at this point, this will actually operate as though it was a gear mate. If you remember some of the other assemblies where maybe we hooked a crank or something off of there, and if we made it properly, we'd be able to turn this and you'd be able to see it happening. Now, one of the things I do want you to take note of is as you turn things, what actually happens. So if I look and I look at the teeth that are pointing basically straight up, as I rotate this, um, you can take note of what happens to the other gear. Um, that's half rotation and I'm right back where I started. And if I keep going, you'll notice rotating the large gear one time uh, this rotated more than one time, and you should be able to look at the ratio and figure that out. Um, but for now, that's what you need to do to apply gear mates. You're now good to go ahead and complete the activity in uh, Schoology that'll give you points for this activity.